So let's talk about projectile motion, which is part of kinematics. It describes the motion of a projectile, usually in some sort of parabolic arc. Um, and we see this in sport all the time. So I'm linking to a few YouTube videos. They just show different um, scenarios of projectile motion. This last one is very um, good with its uh, closed captioning and it has a detailed explanation. Um, and one of the most common um, formats that we've seen projectile motion recently is in the game Angry Birds, which uh, many of you guys have probably played. Um, my partner's still obsessed with it, but that is uh, projectile motion at its, I guess, most fun. Also, some of your colleagues have made Dartfish TV biomechanical concept videos that are on, are on Dartfish TV, so I encourage you to go and look through those. Um, there's one of Steve Curry's three-point shot, which is beautiful. And they're really, really well done. All right, so on to the nuts and bolts. Projectile motion is fairly straightforward, even though in your ebook there's a lot of um, equations that could look, look overwhelming, but it's, it's, it's not. So the main thing is that two forces influence a projectile. One of those is gravity, so it's always acting down, 9.8 meter per second squared, pulling down whatever projectile is being thrown or kicked, etc. And the other force is air resistance. Okay, so that's um, the wind, or the air resisting the forward motion. So one acts in the vertical direction, gravity. One um, acts in the horizontal direction, or air resistance. Okay, so if there was no gravity, our projectile would go in a straight line. But due to gravity, we have this parabolic trajectory. And this isn't the best um, image, but it shows that you always have this, this path and gravity is always pulling it down, so it's creating this parabola. All right, so let's look at air resistance. There is this great um, program that I linked to in the prep guide, and I encourage you to open it up and really play with it. And so it gives you your range or your distance, height, and the time that it took your, traje your um, projectile to be shot from this cannon, all right? And so you can change the, the projectile angle or the takeoff angle, the speed, the mass of the projectile, the diameter, and you can add in air resistance. So you can... I turned on air resistance in this example and it decreased the range and the height. All right, so it does change the parabola. And I um, sent a, an adult human flying through the air. The other factor that really affects the parabola is the angle of, pro of projection or the takeoff angle. And so um, I shot this football at 15 degrees, 30, 45, 60, and 75. And these are the results. And so you can tell, they, depending on the, the angle of projection or the tank off angle, you reach a different height, you reach a different range, and it takes a different time to reach the, the, the end of the range as well. So I encourage you, again, one of the requirements that we'll do in class is to really play around with this and understand these factors. The final factor that affects the um, projectile is the velocity. And so I sent this, um, what did I send this time, a bowling ball at 10 meters per second, 15, and 20. And you can see the faster the velocity, the further and higher the projectile goes. And that one's fairly straightforward. So what are ways that we can increase that linear velocity? Well, one way to increase the linear velocity, as we'll talk about next week, is to um, increase the radius of the implement that you're using. So we have linear velocity is equal to r, or this radius times the angular velocity. 
So when you use something like a tennis racket or golf clubs, it's basically extending your arms or extending this R, which is going to increase your linear velocity. And you guys probably all know if you play handball, um, you're not going to hit the ball as fast as if you hit it with a tennis racket. The other thing that affects um, the, uh, para the projectile is projection height. So we, we have this concept called relative projection height. So um, the projection height um, may be different than the impact height, right? So the starting height versus the ending height. We can have a positive projection height, say in baseball, that the projection height or where you throw the ball is much higher than the impact height. I've not had the opportunity to stand on a baseball mound recently, but um, they're fairly high, and so they're pitching down, and that can extend the flight time. Or you can have a negative projection height, and one example is golf. So if you shoot from the bunker, you are lower than where you want the golf ball to actually go, and that is going to affect your projectile. And you can also use this program to at least increase the projection height. It doesn't quite submerge yet, maybe they'll change that program, but you can um, raise up your cannon. So here's from the original projection height. We have this parabola trajectory. If we increase the projection height, then you get a higher height and it goes further. Alright, and now an application. So I found this in the ESPN Go magazine um, a few years back, and this was technology that they were using for long jumpers or even triple jumpers. And basically it was very simple. Instead of videotaping these athletes and then going to the lab and analyzing it, although with Dartfish you could give them feedback um, instantaneously, um, but this is another way to get instantaneous feedback. So they wear a hat and it has a marker. So actually they can probably use dart fish to actually um, film this. So they have a marker that is tracked. So as they jump, they get their um, velocity in the x direction, so the horizontal direction, in the y direction, and their angle of takeoff. So as they're practicing, they can start to tweak that projection angle or their takeoff angle to try to increase the horizontal velocity or the velocity in the x axis. Okay, we can see that a little clearer in this shot. So it's all based on the marker on the hat, their takeoff velocity, and they can measure vertical velocity and the horizontal velocity in orange. And so this just gives instantaneous feedback to your athlete as you're, you're kind of trying to tweak their, their performance.